on behalf of nnf gujarat i dr prashant kare secretary of nnf gujarat welcome one and all to today's neonatal patshala i request president dr sandeep trivedi to welcome our guests i welcome all the participant and the today's expert dr pradeep sir and dr nishan sir and also dr sunjit sir and ashish mehta sir welcome and the neonatal patshala is very useful for the pediatrician and neonatologist and the pg student thank you prashant thank you to prashant so moving ahead with today's topic focus in sepsis we are having a expert dr pradeep suryavanshi with us who is going to present a talk in his talk he will be presenting on focus in sepsis and will be discussing he is a professor and head department of neonatology bu medical college pune head and department of neonatology and pediatrics sayadri hospital pune and chief pediatrician and consultant neonatologist noble hospital pune is mentor to department of pediatrics bld university bijapur he is having many original articles more than 50, 58 original articles four national guidelines and contributed in chapters of many books 13 books he authored books mainly related to the neonatal point of care ultrasound he is doing mentorship of 34 nicus in india and chairperson of neo focus india that is a neonatal point of care usg he is member of european society of pediatric research neonatal FICO group and he was a secretary of Maharashtra NNF chairperson in IC USG and ECO committee of NNF India from 2012 to 2018 member in IC accreditation committee NNF India and resident coordinator IEP newborn research station and he is a faculty for conferences local state national and international conferences and given more than 286 talks so welcome dr pradeep suryavanshi thank you Uh, along with him we do have a dr nishan benet he is a uh, neurologist he has done his neurology from uk and he is assistant professor in department of neurology all india institute of medical science nagpur he is ex consultant neurologist st mary's hospital manchester uk and ex consultant neurologist royal victoria infirmary newcastle uh, upon tyre uk so welcome dr nishan thanks Fine. So, without taking much time, I request Dr. Pradeep Singh to start the session. Thank you, sir. Uh, is my screen is uh, visible and am I audible? Yes. All right. So, um, dear friends, uh, thank you for the uh, invitation. Thanks the NNF Gujarat team, uh, Dr. Sandeep, Dr. Prashant, uh, Somshekar, and uh, Mohit. so what today we are going to discuss we will be working oh sorry some audio problem or it's okay oh, we are okay, we are we are perfect we are perfect please go ahead yeah yeah so we will discuss about some of the important aspect about the um, situations what we are talking here in the form of uh, uh, focus in nicu now what is happening the last decade we are all talk talking about uh, the focus first of all greetings from the pune which was the capital of india in 17th century we can have a special session of a history of pune whenever the time permits and that's one of my favorite area of history but we will discuss about the 15 15 minutes try to have a discussion about little bit about eco little bit about uh, lung and the brain in sepsis on the basis of some of the components where we work out now let's say friends the clinical practice is changing day by day but the clinical history and examination will remain same in the clinical practice what does i mind to say that you have to always take history you have to always do examination in the form of inspection palpation percussion auscultation but one thing which has added now the simulation training and one thing will add is insonation now this insonation what we are talking is bedside ultrasound in each field i'm not talking about neonatology but most of the field this insonation is going to help to solve your problems so what is this insonation what is this point of care ultrasound we have a problem in neonatology especially we are talking about sepsis that does the baby has vasodilatory shock hypovolemic shock or what type of the patient we are dealing that question is in my mind i want to solve that question by doing bedside ultrasound 
by checking the functions of the heart as a preload, load, and afterload. On the basis of my heart examination, I will get an answer, and that answer I will apply my intuitive practice in the form of a taking decision. I apply that decision in the form of treatment, and next day or within 12 hours, I'll see the response again by the ultrasound. That is called as a point of care ultrasound, that is called as a bedside ultrasound, which is called as a clinician perform ultrasound. So, friends, Ultrasound has a diagnostic role, sudden collapse of the neonet assessment role for screening purposes, for monitoring purposes, for prognosis, for therapeutic purposes, and for research. I would say that those people who are doing MD, DNB, or DM, they should think first research also. So we will be talking about the ultrasound in sepsis by and large, in that how the functional echo helps, how the cranial ultrasound helps, lung ultrasound and gut ultrasound helps and what are the research components we can think in our day-to-day -day practice so let's see about these ones now i just mentioned what are the focus question comes in my mind does this baby has issues related to hypovolemia does this baby has the problems with the contractility cardiac output does the baby has this hypotension because of the vasodilatory shock, cardiogenic shock, or does baby has a cardiac tamponade? These are the questions will come in our mind when we think about neonatal sepsis. Same thing, the questions will come in my mind about the brain ultrasound. Am I dealing with ventriculitis, meningitis, hydrocephalus because of ventriculitis? The same thing happens about the lung ultrasound. Am I dealing with a pneumonia? Pneumonia related to synpneumonic effusion or complicated effusion, which is empyema. Same thing, does my gut has involved because of this sepsis, which related to complication in the form of ascites, complicated ascites. And while doing this one, I have done some procedure and I want to check that line position. This is the scope of the focus when we deal with the sepsis babies. Now let's see the this first case and then we will have some discussion. This is a 34 weeker 1.4 kg baby. On day six of life, baby came as outborn because baby was deteriorated in the form of apnea, bradycardia, hyperglycemia, acidosis, high lactate, required ventilation, hypotension. You see, 34 weeker babies, you want mean blood pressure above 35. Here is 2025. Poor perfusion, acidosis, lactate. And we all know most likely diagnosis is sepsis. That is what we do in neonatology as a first diagnosis. Definitely, you have to do the differential diagnosis. Does you are dealing with IVH or whether you are dealing with the basically pneumothorax, you want to dope, you want to rule out all those possibilities you want to rule out. But most likely, the sepsis, we are discussing sepsis here, hence, most likely sepsis. Now let's see this baby's functional echocardiography. This is the functional echocardiography of this baby with TRJ, with MRJ, with this bidirectional PDA. Now, as a neonatologist, you know that these are the features of secondary pulmonary hypertension. So what this case has taught me that the babies with a late onset sepsis they are presenting with secondary pulmonary hypertension. So hence, our team has documented this one as the babies we have compared with the culture positive sepsis with non-culture positive sepsis. In the late onset sepsis, we did a functional echocardiography. And what we found out that the babies with the late onset sepsis have high incidence of secondary pulmonary hypertension documented by TR, MR, PR, septal position. And that paper was published in Journal of Ultrasound, Italian Journal, last year. The mean pulmonary artery pressure tried is 35, above 35. Normally, you want definitely less than 35, less than 25. So what is the first conclusion came out in our research or thought process that in India, late onset sepsis with echocardiography has shown secondary pulmonary hypertension. At the same time, 
one of our dm resident also documented that these babies have these bidirectional mainly preterm babies reopening of the duct and that duct is a bidirectional and this duct doesn't require treatment for closure in the form of brufen or paracetamol they close automatically when you treat sepsis when you do proper ventilation and this is mainly in gamma sepsis and this paper is been again for tropical pediatric general tropical pediatrics is submitted first revision has been done so this is what we are talking that the babies have bidirectional pda why they have bidirectional pda again for my hypertension so what we saw sepsis hypertension bidirectional pda one more paper which we saw that these babies have a high cardiac output and we all know these babies are trying to compensate so there is a hypotension and there is a high cardiac output what does it mean to you the heart rate is high cardiac output is high that means the baby has issue with the vasodilatation we know the formula as stroke volume into heart rate is cardiac output and from cardiac output and blood pressure we can calculate vascular resistance so babies cardiac output is high and still the baby has hypotension hence these babies are vasodilatory shock and this is one more paper our team has published that high cardiac output in late onset neonatal sepsis so what we found out that babies with gram negative sepsis have a high cardiac output so what we saw so what high pulmonary hypertension bidirectional pda and they have they have high they have the they have the high um, cardiac output one more paper again one of the dm candidate they have measured the ventricular functions in sepsis in the late part of the sepsis when they are deteriorating more they have a right ventricular and left ventricular dysfunction as you know the ear ratio is abnormal you saw the tapsi and mapsi is abnormal you saw the mpa index is abnormal this is again submitted to journal of ultrasound so what we saw the baby has pulmonary hypertension bidirectional pda vasodilatory shock with ventricular dysfunction one more thought process came out that in the form of you see this baby which is a four chamber subcostal view and there is a pericardial effusion this baby with sepsis with ascites and this baby with sepsis with a pleural effusion so one of the dm candidate dr pari has documented that the babies with the late onset sepsis have third space loss with a minimal pericardial effusion not requiring treatment they resolve by 15 days minimal ascites and minimal pleural effusion and that indicates that these babies are prone for leak so there is a volume loss there is a third space loss that is documented so what we learn so far we learn that in india these sepsis babies with a warm shock which is documented by bedside ultrasound as vasodilatory shock with third space loss with high cardiac output with a secondary pulmonary hypertension and in the end stage they have ventricular dysfunction so those students who are actually doing this one this is all been by research and this research is important for indian nicus because we do see lot of late onset sepsis so these are the findings we got by research now let's apply this finding for clinical practice so naturally when there is a third space loss when there is a hypovolemia you want to use the volume so you give the volume 10 20 max 30 i don't give more than probably 20 30 that is enough but after that you want to decide the agents whether you want to use dopamine epinephrine not epinephrine vasopressin these are the drugs which are available as a vasopressor to you because we want to use vasodilatory vasopressor because this is a vasodilatory shock so what what we did just to see the basic pharmacology of these drugs dopamine we know it's a vasopressor but dopamine increases the pulmonary vascular resistance hence whenever there is a sepsis with pulmonary hypertension 
with hypotension dopamine actually worsens your permanent hypertension that is what we saw in echo so in echo we saw these babies with hypotension with permanent hypertension and if i use the dopamine it will worsen about adrenaline yes it has inotropic effect plus vasopressor effect so it increases your system your resistance what about noradrenaline noradrenaline is a fantastic drug which acts on alpha 1 and alpha 2 alpha 1 has a vasopressor effect increases the vascular resistance alpha 2 decreases your pulmonary vascular resistance and that is the beauty of your action of noradrenaline what does it mean if the baby has a vasodilatory shock with pulmonary hypertension noradrenaline is very useful hence last 5 years our unit has stopped using dopamine and we shifted our management protocol towards noradrenaline because most of these warm shocks have high cardiac output with vasodilatation and for that you required volume and vasopressors and for that noradrenaline is the drug of choice this is the neurology questions 2018 now 2022 neurology questions article is coming out what book is coming out and along with dr nagpal and dr mohit sani we have written an article about developing countries and hemodynamics and we recommended this case scenario as a late onset sepsis we should think about using volume and noradrenaline as a vasopressor agent that is what we are thinking for developing countries so what our team has done dr reema along with dr nishant who is the another monitor here they have documented that noradrenaline in the late onset sepsis 30 babies of late onset sepsis with pulmonary hypertension hypotension used the noradrenaline and then repeat echo after 3 days showed improvement of blood pressure decrease in pulmonary hypertension and improved oi so noradrenaline is useful in hypotension with secondary pulmonary hypertension naturally noradrenaline doesn't have action on heart hence those babies have a ventricular dysfunction we should think about inotropes or inodilators one more step our team has gone ahead so we saw noradrenaline is useful can i use adrenaline so we have compared adrenaline and noradrenaline as one more rct and this artist as it is also in the press as comparison of adrenaline versus noradrenaline and what we found out that both drugs are effective and they are good drugs because we wanted to tell the people that noradrenaline is useful in india all people are using noradrenaline very less but noradrenaline has a very good action on alpha and alpha 2 receptor which improves your vasopressor which improves your pulmonary pressure so that is why noradrenaline is a better drug and that's why one of our dm candidate has proved that noradrenaline can be used in late onset sepsis so that's one more research what i am talking one more research again done okay the babies are using noradrenaline but when there is a ventricular dysfunction can i use milrinone because most of the babies of the milrinone are only in the pulmonary hypertension data is available only in pulmonary hypertension can i use this milrinone in sepsis with ventricular dysfunction so we took 20 babies with ventricular dysfunction and we used the milrinone and we saw improved oi we decreased the pulmonary hypertension better ventricular function after 48 hours hence we think combination of noradrenaline plus milrinone is better for indian nicu when you are documented late onset sepsis with vasodilatory shock with pulmonary hypertension with ventricular dysfunction these are the thought process came out from this research what we are talking so we are talking focus we are talking cases we are talking septic shock and we are talking the clinical applicability so this is what i am trying to say you guys we have septic shock with warm shock these are the effects of cns i told you there is a pulmonary hypertension so think about not adrenaline pulmonary hypertension think about milrinone we have effect of the vasodilatory shock that is not adrenaline as a vasopressor we have myocardial dysfunction so milrinone is the one so 
what is research and what is case has taught yes there could be different cases this is one case scenario given if there is only a hypotension without pulmonary hypertension dopamine is yes acceptable but role of dopamine has gone down especially in sepsis when you have hypotension with pulmonary hypertension so this is what i'm trying to say that role of focus in sepsis in indian nicu those students who are interested this is the book written by our team atlas of neonatal functional echo you can go through this one you will get all the information about the functional echocardiography focus this is another book written um, uh, by dr mohit sani and our team and you can go through this book as all ideas about the focus in indian nicu that will be useful to you so i think this is the first part and i will open for the discussion for the next 5 minutes we can have a discussion then i will come to the lung and i will come to the brain these are the important thing in the sepsis so um, nishant uh, are you there and yes yeah yeah please have let's have a, a little bit interactive uh, few points from your side can you have the uh, points from your side about uh, basic focus and functional echo or what are the process you have uh so that was a uh, that was a good paper i think i was part of bharti when uh, we started this research on adrenaline and noradrenaline i just didn't know the results but uh, it's good to see that both the drugs are uh, equally effective especially when we are dealing with yeah. late onset yeah. sepsis gram negative sepsis especially yeah yeah, yeah. so, so was you, there a difference yeah. found in uh, gram negative versus gram positive sepsis basically the number is very less about gram positive when we took the numbers so i am waiting for more cases of gram positive and then i'll compare about that gram positive as you all know in india we end up with 80% of the gram negative and only 10% to 20% of gram positive and we struggle about comparison so i'm waiting for more numbers um somshikar professor somshikar any comments from your side uh no I, the comments are not on uh, the research but on on uh, on focus but more comments on uh, the way you have uh, conducted the research and followed the research up uh, it is uh, very exciting because you have kind of followed a particular train of thought and ensured that we have uh, consecutive uh, dm residents uh, taking over the topics and uh, following up uh, the previous research with the next research question so that that has been very exciting uh, to see and uh, i don't i think most of us like we are talking about your own research and so that's that's very interesting and i think it is good to see uh, such research come out of india and i, I hope uh, we are able to do uh, uh, more, more and more uh, i think that's that's yeah. my limited point and yeah. i'm very very happy to see uh, these publications I, as i said personally too this is very interesting but what i would want to point to others watching uh, or listening to this is uh the step by step process in which uh, the research ideas have followed up and ensured that uh, they have got published especially by making a larger team and, and discussing with other others uh, too so that that's uh, the, that's a very interesting uh, interesting part thank you thank you professor somshikar uh, that's my co partner is there uh, mohit sir are you there mohit sir Okay. Okay. So, sir is there. So, I think uh, we are very happy that uh, Mohit sir has uh, is actually very very important role in India. Uh, what uh, all these uh, his uh, his untiring efforts are going on day to day, day to every weekend is uh, going out for these workshops. So, any points from your side, sir? Sir, yes. As sir has told, Tom Shikhar sir, that uh, like the trials we have started, they are very good and relevant trials. we just make it some multi central two or three and center of inclusion make a big study out of it that will be landmark that will yeah. be landmark studies from our uh, uh, from this neonatal hemodynamics point of view it will be very nice very nice. i i think we, we should uh, uh, the next step would be probably to get three or four centers who do hemodynamics to get together and do larger randomized control uh, studies based on many of the studies that you have done fantastic so already i got the somshekar already i got mohit sir i got already got nishan for his support so let's think about good positive impact factor in the future thank you so let's see the next step let's see the next step the same patient so now the same patient what we are talking here now is done the lung ultrasound and the lung ultrasound 
turned out to be the pneumonia. So this is, you can see, this is a shred sign. And this shred sign with abnormal, abnormal pleural line. And this is a classic example of the pneumonia in these babies. So what I want to tell you that, don't finish your echo. Go back, go and see the lung ultrasound in these babies. And they are very helpful to document. And you will find out this nice, simple shred sign with, with air bronchograms or fluid bronchograms with similar little bit pleural effusion as a pneumonic effusion. That is what probably one more area we should think as lung ultrasound in sepsis. The simplest way, because a lot of outbound, they come there uh, two weeks time, three weeks time, four weeks time, they will have pneumonia, community acquired pneumonia. The simplest way of diagnosing community acquired pneumonia is a hepatization, shred sign, and ear bronchogram. That is simplicity about lung ultrasound. The same baby, we wanted to do the lumbar puncture. And a lot of time when you do the initial part of learning process, it is a traumatic lumbar puncture. Hence, you just put this simple probe, linear probe, and see this linear probe, you will be able to find, you will be able to find the vessels and you can do the lumbar puncture very easy. When you shift to the cranial ultrasound in these babies, what you turned out? This cranial ultrasound is classic example of ventriculitis. So this is the example of ventriculitis. You can see the uh, particles inside, what I call as a rainy season. And these are example of ventriculitis. So the baby with sepsis, you can diagnose meningitis, you can diagnose ventriculitis, you can diagnose abscess, and then your management changes, your prognosis changes, your thought process changes. That is about the brain ultrasound. You can see this, uh, this is the one case report written by, again, one of our uh, uh, DM fellow, Prince and Nishant is also there. There is a brain abscess. This baby came outborn on two weeks of life with high grade fever. And you see, this is a classic cranial focus done and the organism turned out to be burcordelia. And this burcordelia with septation requires six weeks of antibiotics. Naturally, outcomes are going to be bad. But the focus usually immediately on day one, you diagnose this brain abscess. Another baby, if you see, this is the, this is the subdural empyma. Can you see here? This is the cranial ultrasound with subdural empyma. And this subdural empyma turned out to be because of the uh, acinobacter. So what happens, the importance of the focus as a cranial ultrasound is very useful. We talked about the echo. We talked about the, we talked about the lung, and we are also talking about the brain. Hence, uh, one more research done by our team to find out the role of the registry index in the babies of sepsis. And this is published in Journal of Neurotology uh, in 2018 or 19. The babies with the, babies with the normal or absent flow have a better outcome as compared to the babies with the reverse flow. So you can see these babies, they have a reverse end diastolic flow and their outcome is bad. So RI helps in the prognosis in cases of late onset sepsis. This baby also, you have done the hip ultrasound and you could document the arthritis in this baby when we are talking about the hip ultrasound. At the same time, you can able to have, you can able to have the endotracheal tube position confirmation. That's a line position confirmation because most of these babies will require ventilation. By focus, you can confirm the line. Most of the babies will require the thick line. Hence, you can able to confirm the thick line by that one. So it is very useful when we talk about this one. So one more paper done by our team as a point of care ultrasound in late onset sepsis. Does focus as a role in sepsis? What it turned out as, again, you saw that, 45% of the babies with our brain abnormal focus out of, out of these 67 blood culture positive babies. 80% babies have eco abnormal. 30% babies have a lung abnormality. And 10% babies have a gut abnormality. So what we are trying to say that the focus has a major role in cases of sepsis in India. And as you all know, a lot of babies we do get of sepsis still in India. People say that, oh, we don't get sepsis, our NIC is so good. But I still believe that we do get sepsis. And yes, 
it depends upon the number it depends upon our sepsis protocol but you should think about the brain heart lung and gut that will guide you about your management and in this case 40% dr ramesh one of our first dm fellow who has documented that 40% baby management change because of focus so focus is changing your management so you see this one case this one case what we talked is sepsis with high output with hypotension with vasodilatation we have thought about vaso vasopressor agents when there is ventricular dysfunction we thought about melino we also thought about checking brain lungs and hip the antibody duration has changed prognosis has changed we also confirmed the position of the lines and we could able to help the pick line position so you see the one case one baby you are working with so many diagnoses not only not only we are talking about the this focus but i can i will show later on about the gut and in india we do talk nec but most of the nec in india these are because of these are because of mainly related to the infective nec so we have infection related gut ischemia gut perforations or ascites all those things we end up with those ones so what i am trying to say you here is focus has a tremendous role focus is very simple very useful it's bedside we need to learn day to day it is not one day thing we have to see and then we work on the patterns of those focus now the people will say that those we are able to find out other parameters yes you can able to find out also renal abscess you are able to find out pyonephrosis you are able to find out hydro hydronephrosis you, are, you can find out but remember one thing please be careful that whenever you find structural abnormality involve your cardiologist or radiologist that is most important thing what i want to tell you so the first part what we discuss is the echo and focus now you see the second part what we are trying to say you that the brain and the focus dear friends those who are doing dmd or md or dm neurology think about the focus for research also now i will jump to that part about the focus sepsis and research little bit part uh, i'll this is the article those who wants they can go through that point of care ultrasound in sepsis written by uh, dr nagpal and all these points what i discussed is been included there now what i'll do in the next 5 minutes and then i will open up the discussion i will uh, i will not go to the uh, there are a lot of other research but i think uh, uh, i will just try to show you sorry i will just try to show you the some of the thought process of the research which all dm candidates or uh, multi centric trials what we are discussing today we can think about those discussion uh, in our discussion so we all know about the role of cranial ultrasound we discuss about that we also know about the role of lung ultrasound one of the thing i wanted to show is the pleural effusion and that is very common in cases of sepsis also and you all know about the other parameters but sepsis related parameter i wanted to show you ha this is the one i wanted to show you this baby now you see this baby these are the these are the portal vein gas this baby has a klebsiella with perforation this is the perforation this is the portal vein gas and this is ascites so you can easily do lung ultrasound uh, gut ultrasound and you can able to see that so we discuss about the echo in detail we discuss cranial ultrasound lung ultrasound gut ultrasound lines we all know little bit research which i wanted to tell you because that research will help us from indian perspective and see what i told you the sepsis and research i discussed about the ri i discussed about the focus i discussed about cardiac output from hypertension bidirectional pda ventricular function third space loss not adrenal adrenal loss other research still going on in the unit are systemic blood flow venous doppler and melino in sepsis these are the other things which are going on i would say that you guys if you want uh, these are the pulmonary hypertension papers about the research which are related to hemodynamics 
but they are also related to our day to day practice i think you all know about oral versus iv cilinabil we are also working on milenol for transitional circulation oral versus uh, oral rosentum for pphn for bpd pphn and milenol for pphn these are the other research other dm candidates are doing also ventricular functions in hi and milenol in hi these are the one the doppler study is already systemic review is already published which is uh, published in the developmental neurology uh, which is a systemic review that's what is the along with the uh, km perth team uh, one of our resident uh, chandra rat is in km pune he has done this systemic review and the ri is also abnormal what we are talking i also mention about fgr babies nishant has done cardiac output in stable hg in 2013 now dr arjun has done ventricular function in stable hg also the dr bhavya has done the delayed cord clamping in hga so these are the hg related research about hemodynamics uh, these are the these are the published i think last month so you guys have seen few things and um, what i wanted to tell you that these are the surveys and all that what i would like to request you all is please think about research and hemodynamic research and what just uh, professor somshekar professor mohit sir uh professor nishant has mentioned it's time to think about multicentric trial it's time to think about collaborations one more one more trial which is uh, i have done the recollection of data i think you guys know uh we have visited the periphery centers between 2017 to 19 i have trained seven centers in periphery of maharashtra seven people for doing echocardiography functional echocardiography and they used to screen the babies with a pulse oximeter screen failed and then they used to do telemedicine so role of telemedicine in neonatology and that telemedicine neonatology what we found out that in india the hypoxic respiratory failure is mainly respiratory rather than cardiac so again one more multicentric trial we can think in future now definitely not related to sepsis but definitely useful hence the training is important um that uh, experience is important and i think we um, probably i think mohit sir has taken the maximum workshops in india um, last three years i have stopped uh, myself uh, because of my personal problems but a uh, lot of ultrasound workshops uh, people have done and that is spreading the knowledge and uh, myself i have shifted to the online workshops or e modules and we have trained lot of delegates all over india uh, in these ones one more telemedicine research is going on now we are training 25 centers in the india and again training them in eco and finding out the hypoxia baby and finding out the issues related to these one i think you all know we have conducted previously workshops in dubai myanmar online workshop for sydney uh, oman and online for sri lanka these are the one we are also doing workshops for uh, uh, offline online and how the covid expands then we can work on that one we also started as you all know the new focus we have we have uh, trained the people from all over india as uh, first batch and second batch of new focus uh, uh, is going to finish this uh, this month and third batch is already selected so those i think the training is important knowledge spreading is important and things we should work on that one yes ultrasound is limitation focus is limitation practice 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 more more practice more useful good thing happen now some of the laws are coming that we all can do the focus we all are not under pcp nit act but those things will you all hopefully maharashtra has good law hopefully all over india that law is going to come but still norms are e uh, easing so i think i will stop here and uh, and we can have a discussion for next 5 to 10 minutes and then uh, then we can have so what are questions uh, if any questions uh, we can have a discussion and uh, uh, then we can go ahead uh thank you dr prashant uh, any questions please let me know yeah so prashant i had a question if that is okay uh, uh prashant any questions on the platform uh, uh in action i'll just check on both the platforms by that time you can just ask the questions sir. yeah so one of the questions is uh, like uh, we have had an uh, eco in our in our nic since 2009 almost now 13 years uh so what is your experience over this last 10 12 years in, in terms of the number of uh, people having uh, echoes in the units and their ability to uh, receive uh, uh, or, or to ability to do uh, 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 what do you say functional echocardiography on a, on a regular basis uh. very good question now see 
i will just uh, i will just uh, give my experience about uh, last 15 years first indian experience it's not one day workshop is going to help person has to attend this workshop as a stimulation just to get acclimatized definitely they have to do on daily basis and they have to perform at least i would say minimum 300 to 500 i say 1000 but those people who are doing regularly now i'll give an example of the online workshop which we done in the new focus as a first batch from last year june to uh, december and we made compulsory that they should be doing minimum 500 echoes and i am very happy to tell you that they are diagnosing this is normal heart this is not normal heart so the first requirement is that they should diagnose this is normal heart for diagnosis of normal heart is comes by 6 months of echo once they diagnose this is normal heart then they learn they learn that functional echo very easily side by side in 3 to 6 months so continuously doing if a person is doing since 2009 he is good actually but my thought process is good but please ask them not to document oh i have diagnosed tga i am diagnosing tapbc i am diagnosing coagulation you can diagnose but call the cardiologist if you don't have cardiologist this functional echo is abnormal heart is not normal please refer to pediatric cardiologist that report they should give and anyway baby gets the advantage so 6 months of religious training 6 months of follow up in one year they can definitely do good in the cases of good uh, good echo and good ultrasound that is my thought process yeah uh, so it has been useful so may uh, i'll just have hand over to dr nishant and prashant i i'll i have some questions that come back later dr nishant uh, yeah, i mean uh, i think uh, whichever institutes have uh, dm and dnb programs uh, i think it should be sort of made mandatory as part of their training that they should be learning uh, functional echo as well as everything in focus basically Because that's a it's a very useful, very very useful uh, equipment now in uh, an ICU. So maybe including that in the curriculum itself of uh, DM and DNB students will be uh, really useful. Okay. Uh, so I I had this question uh, while we are talking about uh, DM and. Uh, MD pediatrics. Uh, I think long back uh, I have reviewed papers from Europe uh, where MBBS students have been using not I won't say functional echocardiography but ultrasound to diagnose uh, uh, routine stuff in in in, patient, in patients yeah, so, uh, handheld ultrasounds. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so what what would be the possibility of kind of handheld ultrasound uh, in in the NICU uh, handheld? Yeah. Connected to the phone. Connected to the phone and stuff like that. Yeah. Currently. because of pcp entity handheld might not come but i would definitely say that in next 5 years the ultrasound will come in the first year that means insonation technology will be coming learning of anatomy learning of radiology or interpretation of scan will come in first or second year that is to be sure us european countries mainly the german speaking countries it's already there for pediatrician the cranial ultrasound and ep ultrasound is compulsory training in europe and in german speaking countries the us is still resistant for functional echocardiography because it is a money issue and we follow the us when it comes to medical school hence we are also little bit resistant but eventually now if you do the survey of india every nic has echo machine now those are dm those are dnb those are fellowship center every nic that means who is doing this echo they are already doing without training without uh, thing but they are learning day by day by these videos by these uh, uh, lectures by these uh, various online websites what are those workshops that means they are doing good job but that good job should be included in the curriculum now whenever whenever we call the dm paper exams most of the professor we agree they will ask you clinical examination they will ask you the um, basically the clinical related and that is correct that is mandatory i tell my dmt students 
I am not going to ask you any question related to hemodynamics, any question related to the echo or focus in exam, because you know that. As an internal examiner, I don't ask. The external examiner says that your unit is echo based unit, and I don't like echo, but I will not ask echo. Your boss can ask echo. So this is what happened in the last three years that nobody is asking question related to echo and focus in exams, and this is still this is still the debate. because it takes time to accept new things the radiologists don't like we doing the echo or cardiologists don't like we doing the echo because their bread and butter is little bit reducing the radiologists definitely they don't like because you are diagnosing such a nice ivh such a nice pvl you are doing good lung ultrasound and you are doing gut ultrasound but you see the research now not to praise my unit but there are 22 articles in last 3 years on focus so this is good thing for india yeah, absolutely i think we all should do focus centric trial and we can india has more potential and we are ahead than the us in the focus because they don't have accessibility i'll just give example i will not quote the name of the doctor consultant from new york is joining third batch of new focus because he has a tight exposure and he said that i have seen your videos and i want to join so there are six country consultant are joining australia new york that is us canada um, europe uae myanmar nepal what does it mean we have done good work but so just to note just yeah. to note pradeep i i think in 2018 or 19 pas when i attended there was a a uh, gujarati uh, resident who was doing a fellow residency in us and he was presenting a paper on eco so i just asked question and then i asked who does the eco he said i don't do the eco somebody else comes and does the eco so what you are saying is absolutely <laughs> true probably mo more more pediatricians forget about even neonatologists know how to do functional eco in india than probably in the us i will i will take the names of the people who are tied to cities the dm center dmb center fantastic but tell me i you know the maharashtra now there is a professor gons no he is not professor he is a clinician yeah, goa gavas 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 i know him in goa dr gons he does all sorts of echo and ultrasound better than radiologist so what does it mean focus is a learning curve day to day thing but we should not feel i am a cardiologist i am a radiologist and we should not charge that is very important thing also dr gavas is 60 plus i think and he has started learning focus late and still doing very well i at, okay. i have given one one session in 2013 in goa and he said sir i want to learn mujhe bola sir tum class join kar do he went to chennai he learn fetal medicine first you can imagine now there is a now there is a doctor bolana in government hospital in west bengal snc who is a chincha of snc and he diagnoses all echo he does all focus is in second batch so what does it mean we as a pediatricians are actually university toppers during our mbbs or md that's why we became pediatrician you have not taken radiology at that time because pediatric was a university topper branch so you all can do the radiology yeah absolutely there's the same question asked by ronak that plenty of beginners like him are doing eco daily but they always have a question in mind whether the findings are correct or not please, so what to do nahi nahi please find mentor bhai tum abhi ronak means gujarat se ho tumhare ghar pe wo mohit sir baithe hai unko unko piche logo unke piche logo nahi to fir aapke yahan pe bahut sare log hai wo biraj hai mentor ke hisab se dekho kabhi bhi khud ke main acha kar raha hu good abhi bhi hum log i call स्टिल कार्डियोलॉजिस्ट भाई मुझे नहीं समझ रहा है को आप देखो ये तो फाइंड आउट मेंटल उनसे साथ इमेज चेक करो वेदर यू आर करेक्ट और नॉट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इट इज नॉट लाइक दैट कि आपने देख लिया वीडियो आपने ऑनलाइन देख लिया ऐसे नहीं होता है ऑलवेज फाइंड आउट वेदर यू आर डूइंग करेक्ट और नॉट सो जस्ट कमिंग बैक रोनक जस्ट समर कमिंग बैक टू द पॉइंट Uh, about your examiner is not asking eco uh, because they don't like it so this is going to be there with uh, people who are on the older side or older age and they will say ki we require basic newborn care we require so many other things to be sorted out before we start doing high fi things which is but we also have to understand that what you have done in terms of like 
uh, focus in sepsis. US guys will not do because they don't see so much sepsis as we do. So we will have to solve our own problems. No one else is going to solve our own problems. So it is very important that we do our own work. See, one is the focus, second is the sepsis, and third is the growth restriction. This three area, Europe or US is not going to find answer. So when it is a growth restriction, when it is a sepsis, we have to find out our own answers. Ronak had a question. Ronak. It's okay, sir. Thank you. Good. Uh, or Dr. Nishan, any comments or? Uh, speaking of growth restriction, sir, I just thought of uh, because a lot of normative data on cardiac outputs or on you know any flows is basically uh, is on mostly on AGA babies, and uh, what we briefly saw in the uh, you know very small research we did in 2011, 12, 13, we saw that it, SGAs can actually have different outputs, different flows as well. So I was wondering whether we should have a multicentric uh, you know, a group and who can actually document the first of all the normative data for SG babies because that's some that's something we just don't know. So uh, the first priority, Nishant, is we have to define babies with a normal flow and abnormal flow. And side by side compare the data, you say basically cardiac output, ventricular functions, transitional circulation. In a normal, basically, AG, growth restriction without flow problems, growth restriction with the flow problems. With flow problems. These are the additional components. I think, I think, advantage we should take from this uh, today's seminar. Time is to have a multicentric collaborations. That is what we can think. Uh, so, in terms of uh, uh, equipment, I'm sure you cover that in in the workshops. Uh, what uh, if somebody wants to start learning, uh, what kind of equipment uh, would they start looking at? What, what is the cost or uh, should they, yeah. uh, like for example, uh, it's okay with DM students and DNB neonatology students. Uh, uh, what do you think should residents who are uh, second year or third year residents uh, in pediatrics, should they be learning it? What, what is your take on it? So the two things, one is equipment part. The first equipment part, always buy first portable machine for the unit where you are tied to cities or a small unit, which is less than 20 bed. Portable, you can think any portable, whether it's a G or Philips or Sonosite, whatever you want. Uh, up to 10 lakh, you get a good uh, machine with three probes. One is a sector probe, which is probably six or eight. Second is a linear probe, 10 to 14. And third is hockey stick probe. These three probes are important. Now, the second question is about the pediatric resident. I will give my example why I developed this focus. In 96, my research was ciprofloxacillin in sepsis in newborn. And I have measured the cartilage, knee, knee cartilage diameters. Because that time, quinolones were banned, banned into the pediatric population. Or very, very cautious about quinolones. We used to reserve for typhoid and all that. But quinolones were coming sensitive for sepsis, so we started using quinolones. And then my guide said that you should do these quinolones and we should measure cartilage damage. I said, I don't know how the cartilage looks on ultrasound. I, I don't know what is ultrasound. No, no, you have to do that. So I requested my radiology resident to show me what is knee joint, what is cartilage, what is that. It was white and black in 96, so You can imagine my, my situation of thesis. I requested my brother who is in US from articles. Those time Google was not there. Those time all internet was there, not there. So my brother has sent articles by by all by post. And I started learning simple thing about this ultrasound. I was not doing, I was requesting that girl to do and I was documenting. So this is why my first exposure about ultrasound. If my thesis would not have been ultrasound, today I would not have talked about all this today. So what I'm trying to say that, if the people get exposure in second year, third year, they will pick up. And they are better in doing this ultrasound than us because they are good in techno savvy people. So my, my thought process is that. Now you see, my son is better in computer than me because they have been learning computer since 
first standard, second standard. We started learning computer when we were in second year MBBS, third year MBBS, sorry, third uh, MD. So I think it will come. I will, it will come. Thank you. We are coming to the close. Uh, I think uh, should we? Uh, yeah. Do we have? Do we need to do anything more, or uh, are we? Yeah. Uh, so thank you so much, uh, Dr. Somshekar sir. And at this junction, we really appreciate uh, Dr. Pradeep Suryavanshi and present a certificate of appreciation to him for being a faculty in focusing sepsis. I mean, for <coughs> pediatricians or residents, this is totally a new topic. Frankly speaking, uh, we are not used to this and. When we see that majority of publications are from India, we feel proud that someone is doing a great work from India. So thank you so much, Dr. Pradeep Turiyavansi, for being a faculty, as well as thank you so much to Dr. Nishan Gandhi that you also were the expert in today's session and uh, presented the talk. So thank you so much, everyone. And uh, next Wednesday, again, at the same time, 3.30, we will be having a neonatal part shala. A lesson from experts, therapeutic hypothermia by Dr. Ravi uh, will be the talk. So I request everyone to join on the same link of ClearNet as well as YouTube link. Both the link remains same and 